welcome to the daily news simplified the why what and how of newspaper reading today we will discuss the daily edition of the hindu newspaper dated 24th august 2018 so let's start the article on page number 9 is related to personal laws bill 2018 and this bill seeks amendments to laws that discriminate against the leprosy patients so this will form a part of the general studies paper 2 under the subtopic laws for the betterment of vulnerable sections Now previously in the year 2017 a question was asked in the general studies paper 2 which was related to the rights of persons with disabilities act 2016 so this question was related to the laws related to vulnerable sections part of the syllabus so let us try to understand what are the key aspects of this personal laws bill 2018 now this article is in news because the personal laws bill 2018 has been introduced in the parliament and this bill seeks amendments to the laws that discriminate against the leprosy patients So now let us understand what is leprosy. So leprosy is also known as Hansen's disease and it is a long term infection by the bacterium Mycobacterium leprae or the Mycobacterium lepromatosis. Now previously it was believed that it is a highly contagious disease. However now modern medicine has proved that contrary to the popular belief it is not highly contagious and leprosy is curable with a treatment known as multi drug therapy. Now let us understand why is this bill being introduced? So previously there were about 110 central and state laws which discriminated against the leprosy patients. Now these laws of central and the state governments had biased provisions against the leprosy patients. And these biased provision in these statutes were introduced prior to the medical advancements. This is because previously it was believed that the leprosy was highly contagious disease. However, the modern medicine has helped in curing the leprosy disease completely. and the leprosy can be cured by multi drug therapy now why is it important to repeal these discriminating laws this is because these laws stigmatize and isolate leprosy patients and are based on age old beliefs about the leprosy and are not based on the modern medicine related advancements so due to this these laws cause patients untold sufferings now various committees and conventions has recommended the repealing of such laws or the amendments to the discriminating statutes of state and central government and these amendments are in line with the un general assembly's resolution of 2010 on the elimination of discrimination against persons affected by leprosy and their family members and india has signed and ratified this resolution related to the leprosy further the proposed law follows the nhrc recommendations that is the national human rights commission's recommendations as well Thirdly the Rajya Sabha Committee on Petitions in its 131st report on petition praying for integration and empowerment of leprosy affected patients had examined various statutes and desired that concerned ministries and state governments urgently wipe clean the anachronistic and discriminatory provisions in the prevalent statutes so the Rajya Sabha Committee had also recommended the removal of discriminatory provisions of various central and state government related statutes and the law commission in its 256 report which is the eliminating discrimination against persons affected by leprosy had also recommended removing the discriminatory provisions in various statutes against leprosy patients so these are some of the commissions and committees which had recommended the removal of discriminatory provisions against the leprosy patients so the personal bill 2018 attempts to end discrimination against leprosy persons in various central laws and these laws are the divorce act 1869 the dissolution of muslim marriages act 1939 the special marriage act 1954 the hindu marriage act 1955 and the hindu adoptions and maintenance act of 1956 so this bill seeks to change the discriminatory provisions of these laws further the bill eliminates leprosy as a ground for dissolution of marriage or divorce and the amendment introduced in the bill omit the provisions which stigmatize and discriminate against the leprosy affected persons So the amendments introduced in this bill will try to remove the provisions which stigmatize and discriminate against the leprosy affected persons. And the main objective of bill is to provide for the integration of leprosy patients into the mainstream. So these are some of the important provisions of the personal laws bill 2018. Now after understanding some of the key provisions of the personal laws bill 2018, you should try and answer this question from mains point of view. With this let us move on to the next article. This editorial on page number 8 and another article on page number 8 are in news because the Indian government has recently refused the flood relief assistance provided by the UAE. So these will form a part of the general studies paper 2 under the topic international relations. 
Further, it will also form a part of the general studies paper 4, that is the ethics paper, under the subtopic ethical issues in international relations and funding. So let us try to understand some of the key points that have been highlighted by both these articles. Now UAE had recently offered monetary assistance for Kerala flood relief. However, the central government has refused to undertake any form of foreign monetary assistance. The central government has cited its refusal as continuation of the practice of not taking foreign monetary assistance during disasters. And the refusal to take foreign monetary assistance started after the 2004 tsunami. So the central government has refused the monetary assistance provided by the UAE for Kerala flood reliefs. Now India had then refused to undertake the foreign assistance because of the following reason. The first was that India itself was providing monetary assistance to other countries affected by the 2004 tsunami and therefore it could not accept the aid itself. Secondly, it was symbolic of being a rising power that is self-sufficient and therefore does not require aid and help from someone else. So these were the issues because of which the India had refused to undertake foreign assistance during the tsunami. Now the authors in both these articles are arguing that the central government should accept the monetary assistance. And the reason in support given by them are, first, the National Disaster Management Plan of 2016 states that India will appeal for foreign aid. However, if the national government of another country voluntarily offers assistance as a goodwill measure, then the central government may accept the offer. So the authors say that the acceptance of foreign aid was a part of the National Disaster Management Plan 2016 itself. Further, the refusal or not accepting the foreign assistance is misplaced since it is caused by false pride. In this line, the authors have highlighted that even the United States after the hurricane Katrina took foreign assistance but had no dent to its image as a major power. So the authors are highlighting that in the National Disaster Management Plan of 2016, India itself has said that it will accept foreign aid during the natural disasters. Further, the authors have said that the acceptance of foreign assistance would not lead to a dent in India's image as a major power. Further, the authors have highlighted that foreign assistance should be scrutinized based on country-to-country -country basis. And this should be done in order to ensure the security issue. For example, India has security issues and border issues with Pakistan. So the authors have highlighted that India can refuse the aid in such a case. However, India has good relations with UAE and the authors say that the refusal of foreign aid will lead to alienation of such goodwill countries. So the authors have highlighted that the scrutiny of foreign assistance should be done on a country to country basis and there should be no blanket ban on such assistance. This is because a blanket ban would lead to alienation of the goodwill countries. Now after going through the key points highlighted by the authors, you should try and answer this question from Maine's point of view. With this, let us move on to the next article. Now there are two news articles on page number 18 or the last page. The first is related to NASA's Spitzer Space Telescope and the second is related to a satellite launched by the European Space Agency. And the name of the satellite is ALUS. So this will form a part of the preliminary examination syllabus under the topic current events of international importance as well as a part of the science and technology. Now you can see that in the year 2017 a question was asked related to the purpose of the ELISA or the Evolved Laser Interferometer Space Antenna. And in the year 2016, a question was asked related to what is Grease Lightning 10 recently in the news. So questions are asked related to the important projects of NASA or any other project which is related to the space. So let us try to understand some of the key facts related to the Spitzer Space Telescope and the satellite launched by the European Space Agency. So the Spitzer Space Telescope is an infrared space telescope launched in 2003 and it is the fourth and final of the NASA's Great Observatories program. And the goal of this program was to provide a unique and infrared view of the universe and allow us to peer into the regions of the space that are hidden from the optical telescopes. Now the NASA's Great Observatories program includes four large powerful space-based astronomical telescopes. And the name of these four telescopes are the Hubble Space Telescope, the Compton Gamma Ray Observatory, the Chandra X-ray Observatory and the Spitzer Space Telescope. So these four names are important for us from Prilin's point of view. And regarding the ALS satellite, it is launched by the European Space Agency or the ESA. And this satellite will measure the winds around the globe and help us in improving the weather forecasting. Further, it is said that this satellite will play a key role in our quest to better understand the workings of our atmosphere. 
and the World Meteorological Organization had highlighted that lack of direct global wind measurement is one of the major deficits in the global observing system. So by filling this gap, the ALS will give scientists the information they need to understand how wind, pressure, temperature and humidity are interlinked. And this new mission will provide insight into how the winds influence the exchange of heat and moisture between the Earth's surface and atmosphere. And this will also help us in understanding important aspects of the climate change. So the facts that are important from Prelim's point of view are the agency which has launched this satellite and how the launch of this satellite will help us in understanding the atmosphere. Now regarding the question that was asked in 2017, you should know that ELISA was related to the detection of gravitational waves and the Grease Lightning 10 was an electric plane tested by the NASA. With this, let us move on to the next article. Now this news article on page number 10 is related to the WhatsApp and which has been in news because of various lynching incidents that have taken place because of the rumors that are spread on this famous social media application. And this will form a part of the general studies paper 3 under the topic role of social media and media in internal security challenges. And previously various questions have been asked about the misuse of social media. For example, this question in 2017 was related to the mob violence incidences in India. Further in the year 2016, a question was asked related to the use or misuse of internet and social media by non-state actors. Further in the year 2013, a question was asked related to the Section 66A of Information Technology Act and the alleged violation of the Article 19 of the Constitution. Now this article is in news because WhatsApp has refused to comply with government's demand of tracing the origin of fake messages because of the privacy concerns of its users. So the WhatsApp is citing privacy concerns for not tracing the origin of fake messages. Now previously to discuss the issue of circulation of mass fake news messages which had triggered communal violence and mob lynching across the country, the Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology had put forward some of the demands to the WhatsApp. Now the government has put forth the following demands in front of WhatsApp. The first is that the government wants traceability of fake messages. And in this regard, the government has asked WhatsApp that the application should find technological solutions to trace the origin of fake messages. This is because the fake forwarded messages have triggered violence in the past. Secondly, the government has asked WhatsApp to set up a grievance officer in India. And in this regard, the government has asked that the application should appoint a grievance officer so that the complaints of fake news can be addressed swiftly in the country itself. Further, the government has asked the WhatsApp to comply with Indian laws. And in this regard, the government has asked that any issue which arises should not be decided in America and should be in compliance with the Indian laws. Fourthly, the government has asked the application to establish local corporate entity. And finally, the government has asked the application to store the data locally. So these are some of the demands that have been put forth by the government of India. Now let us understand what is the main issue. So in this regard, the WhatsApp has agreed on all the demands of government except the issue of traceability of origin of the messages. And according to WhatsApp, tracing the origin of a message would dilute the privacy of its user. Further, the WhatsApp says that people rely on WhatsApp for sensitive information exchange and building traceability will undermine the end-to-end -end encryption creating potential for the misuse of such data. So that is why to preserve the privacy of its user, the WhatsApp is refusing the government's demand of providing the traceability of origin of the messages. And let us understand that end-to-end -end encryption is a system of communication where only the communicating users can read the messages. And in principle, it prevents telecom providers, internet providers and even the providers of communication services from being able to access the cryptographic keys needed to decrypt the conversation. And because no third parties can decipher the data that is being communicated or stored, even the companies that use end-to-end -end encryption are unable to hand over texts of their customers' messages to the authorities. And this is one of the reasons that WhatsApp has not agreed with the government's demand of traceability of the origin of messages. This is because the traceability will undermine the end-to-end -end encryption and create potential misuse of such data. Now the WhatsApp has insisted that it would rather educate people about the misinformation and take various education and advocacy efforts to curb the menace of fake news. And earlier also to abate the fake news menace, the company had taken a series of measures such as restricting the number of forwards at one go and labeling such content which is not original as forwarded messages. 
So these were some of the steps taken by WhatsApp to curb the menace of fake news. Now the government on the other hand is not satisfied by the efforts and is adamant that WhatsApp should explore technological innovations where in case of large scale circulation of provocative and nefarious messages, the origin can be ascertained. So the government wants WhatsApp to ascertain the origin of messages which are provocative and lead to the incidences of violence. Further, the government is firm on charging WhatsApp with abatement charges for communal violence. That is, the government wants to fix the responsibility of WhatsApp in case of communal violences which are triggered by fake news and forwarded fake messages. So these were some of the demands put forward by the government of India and the WhatsApp has agreed on almost all the demands of the government except the issue of traceability of origin of the messages. However, the government is adamant that the WhatsApp should explore technological innovations in order to trace the origin of the messages which are provocative and lead to incidences of violence. Further, government wants to fix the responsibility of WhatsApp in case of communal violence which is triggered by the fake news or rumors on the WhatsApp application. Now this is a news in transition and let us wait how the other events unfold. With this let us move on to the next article. Now in this news article on page number 1, the center wants the Supreme Court to pass strict directions to curb the circulation of online videos of sexual violence against women, children etc. Now this will form a part of general studies paper 3 under the topic basics of cyber security. So let us try to understand what are the key issues that have been highlighted by this article. Now this article is in news because the government has found that the efforts by internet giants like Facebook and YouTube to curb the circulation of online videos of sexual violence against women and children are inadequate. And in this line, the government wants the Supreme Court to issue strict directions to service providers such as Facebook and YouTube. And the ongoing proceedings in the matter started after the Supreme Court took Suomoto note of a letter by an NGO on the rampant circulation of sexual abuse videos. So this article is in news because the government has found the efforts by Facebook and YouTube to curb the circulation of videos of sexual violence as inadequate. Now what are the directions by the government to the service providers like Facebook and YouTube? The first direction includes reducing the time of compliance. In this the government wants to reduce the time taken by intermediary to comply with content removal requests under certain sections of IT Act. And the government wants to reduce this compliance time to less than 10 hours from about the 36 hours at present. So the presently the compliance time is about 36 hours and the government wants to reduce it to only 10 hours. Further, the government wants the service providers to develop monitoring tools. In this, the government wants that the service providers should employ agencies for identification and removal of sexually violent content, particularly videos relating to child pornography, rape, etc. Thirdly, the government wants intermediaries to share certain data with the law enforcement agencies to identify the origin of such content. And fourthly, the government wants the service providers to maintain the trail of messages which include the videos circulations of sexual abuse. So the four directions in short are reducing the time of compliance, development of monitoring tools, identifying the origin of such content and finally maintaining the trails of videos of sexual violence. The government has also compiled a keyword repository of over 500 English and Hindi words and these words have been shared with the intermediary so that they can issue warning messages for searching about child pornography, rape or gang rape videos. So in short the government wants these intermediaries to identify these 500 English or Hindi words which are used for searching the child pornography or rape and gang rape videos. On earlier instructions to set up an easy reporting mechanism for public on their platform, the Facebook has complied partially, while the WhatsApp and Twitter are yet to comply. So this is the status of implementation of such directions. And in this line, the government wants the Supreme Court to issue stricter directions to the service providers like Facebook, WhatsApp, Twitter and YouTube. And this is being done in order to curb the circulation of videos of child pornography and sexual abuse. Now this is a news in transition and let us see how this story unfolds. With this let us move on to the next article. Now this article on page number 13 is related to Moody's prediction about India's growth rate in 2018 and 19. So this will form a part of the general studies paper 3 under the topic Indian economy and issues relating to planning mobilization of resources etc. So let us try to understand what is credit rating, why do countries get credit ratings and what are the factors that decide these ratings. Now let us understand why is this article in news. 
So according to the credit rating agencies Moody's, the Indian economy is expected to grow by about 7.5% in 2018 and 19. And the Moody's says that the high growth is expected because Indian economy is largely resilient to the external pressures like those from the higher oil prices. So now let us understand what is a credit rating. So simply a credit rating is an assessment of the credit worthiness of a borrower. Further, individuals, corporations and governments are all assigned credit ratings. And in case of individuals, the credit rating is known as credit scores. While for the corporations and governments, it is known as credit ratings. Now let us understand why do the countries get credit ratings. Now simply the government requires ratings to borrow money. And they are also given ratings on their worth as an in investment destinations. So these ratings give the investors an idea about the worthiness of their investment destinations. Secondly, a country requests a credit rating agency to evaluate its economic and political environment and arrive at a rating. And this is done to position itself as a destination for foreign investments. So simply the credit ratings are important for attracting the foreign investments. Now let us understand what are the factors that decide these ratings. So these include first the size of economy macroeconomic parameters like fiscal deficit, public debt, current account deficit, etc. Further, the prospects for economic growth are also included in the factors that decide these ratings. The reforms introduced by government are also important for these ratings. These ratings also take into account the ease of doing business in a country. And it also takes into account the regulatory and political environment, etc. So these are some of the factors that are used by the rating agencies in deciding the ratings for a country. Now these ratings are denoted by simple alphanumeric symbols like AA+, AA-, etc. And names of some of the important credit rating agencies include the domestic ones are the Credit Analysis and Research Limited Care, the CRISIL, the SME Rating Agency of India or the SMERA and the international rating agencies include the Moody's, Fitch and Standards and Poor's. Now regarding the India's credit rating, Moody's which is an international credit rating agency had upgraded the government of India's credit ratings to BAA2 from BAA3 in 2017. And India's rating has been upgraded after a period of 13 years. So these are some of the important facts related to the credit ratings. With this we have come to the end of today's discussion. Now let us move on to the question for the day.